Hi everyone, Coach Sullivan here with MGS Coaching Football. I just uh, would like to thank my subscribers and those of you who haven't yet, I really hope you do. I just completed my 38th year coaching football and as a defensive coordinator, but over that time I've also been an offensive coordinator, special teams coordinator, longtime head coach, all of this at both the collegiate and high school levels. Today in this presentation, I want to talk to you about one of our single plug blitzes that's actually a, a, an opposite A-gap blitz that we call Baxter and Max. So it's a single A-gap opposite plug. Okay, so you got a little bit of a crossing action. Alrighty. And so the key terms are, it starts with, it's A-gap opposite side. That's okay, which is going to trigger some rules and techniques. Okay. The center is the read in any of our A-gap plugs. So now it becomes a far edge read of the center because it's an opposite side A-gap blitz. See what's how this builds? So then the auto readout is just a one thing, and it involves the opposite guard pulling to you. So you'll get a trap or a pull call from your um, opposite inside linebacker, but you've got to see that also. So by your second step, you should be reading out, and we'll go through all of that. The lucky Ringo call, again, it's how we designate left and right, what side the pressure's coming from. So it's Baxter, B, it's the backer, and we'll build in the X as part of the name as I go through this. Max, M means it's the mic, and again, the X is the key. That kind of triggers that this is an opposite a gap blitz, okay? Backer and A opposite. Mike A opposite. That's how I utilize the names, and that's how it is presented to our players, whether they're 24 years old or 18, right? Stance key, I'm going to go through that, and this is huge, but the, and the footwork is different because it's an opposite side blitz. It's dig and crossover footwork. And I'll explain how we teach it, how it works, and why I don't change it. Okay, very important, why I don't change it. And I'll get to that during this presentation as well. And this always involves teaching your players how to blitz with their eyes open. Okay, edge, we're reading the edge. You can only do that if your eyes are open. You can only read out, again, if your eyes are open. And you can train your players how to teach their eyes where to be. That's what we mean by when their eyes open. Obviously, they're not running around with their eyes closed. But if you don't teach them how to train their eyes specifically, landmarks of where they should be looking, and then how to react to what they see, then you're, in essence, blitzing blindfolded. Okay? So with all of that, let's begin. On the left, we first of all, what I have, I, I teach our players out of our base three, four front, all of our pressures, all of our pressures can be executed out of all of our fronts, okay? But it's easier to teach it out of your base first, and then we just say well, out of other fronts, you might have a, same, a different starting point, but your end point's the same, okay? So if you're lining up in a different place, that's the different starting point, but your end point is the same. It's the opposite A gap. All right? So whatever fronts you use, I mean, that's a helpful coaching point. It simplifies it for your kids. It's not a new blitz. <laughs> We're just executing it out of a different front. Okay? So each case, it's our base 3-4 front. Okay? We got Baxter on this side. We get Max on the other side. And that's how I'm going to present it to you. All right? So first, Fire Edge Read. Okay, for the backer, I have it in red over here, the fire edge of the center. For the mic, same thing, the red, fire edge of the center. Okay, but what I want to do first is skip down to the all-important, and I'm going to use green when I go through the defensive linebacker's reactions, okay, and red for the... Far edge read, but also the guard. So I can show you the one readout scenario. I want to skip down, as I was starting to say, to the stance key. Why the stance is so important. 
okay? Different usage of the word key there. And then that will bring in our dig crossover footwork, okay? But first, the stance. The football. Our inside linebackers, if they're on the right, so the football's to their left, their left foot is up, okay? If they're on the left, so the football's to their right, their right foot is up, okay? And that foot, up foot is at four, four yards from the football, front tip of the ball. I don't ever talk about heels. I don't want kids looking behind. Your toes at four. If you're not sure, back up a little bit, okay? So their feet. So this is why if I'm on the right of the ball, my right foot is my play side foot. I want that to be taking the first step. If I'm on the left, so my left foot's back. That's my play side foot. I want them downhill defenders, and I want that play side foot taking the first step every single time. Okay? So then you build on that. <clears throat> first of all, the other aspect, excuse me. You watch players on TV, right? A lot of them toes even. Some are staggered. Some got wide. But when they blitz, boop, they all seem to stagger their feet, whether from the get-go or just prior to they're taking off, all right? Their get-off. We hide our fact we blitz because we're always in the staggered stance. It's Back toe to the instep of that foot or the arch of the foot. So it's not a major stagger. It doesn't need to be. don't want it to be. I mean, that first step of the place, that foot's a little six-inch step. Reach step, right? Brings you back to even, okay? The only time they're not in this is if either one of them is, happens to be stacking the nose. We're in one of our stack pet fronts, right? Then their toes are even, but that's not often so they're more, more likely going to be in a staggered stance, and they got to learn both because they flip sides, okay? Not on this board, but they do flip sides, all righty? So that is huge, okay? And in addition to that, when we do blitz, we don't hedge, we don't change anything, and this brings in the dig component, Right. If you saw the other uh, presentations, it's dig and drive straight ahead. Well, now they got to cross over the football, so it's dig and crossover. So the big key is why we do this: no false steps. So we teach our players and do this in everyday drills, right? Both the stance and all the different get-offs, including blitz. Okay, the dig—that's the front toe. We just tell them, look. Normally, yeah, your weight's evenly distributed. When you're blitzing, you're going to lift the heel of your front foot off the ground so you can literally feel the pressure on that front toe. And then you're going to dig off of it. Push, dig, push. We emphasize the dig so there's more push. And the dig crossover is they literally take the back foot and cross over. Okay, and, and it's a natural pivot. If the heel's off the ground, when they cross over, their up foot will naturally pivot. So it is not the least bit awkward. Okay, you do it at home, you'll see. You lift that heel up. When you cross over, the up foot, the ball of the foot, your foot will pivot. And that's the crossover. All right, I don't want to start messing around. Like, okay, so now you're going to, Put all the weight on the back foot. You're going to step with the front. It's an extra step. First of all, it's one, two to do the crossover. Okay? Dig and crossover, you end up at the same place with more power and force. Okay? And if a kid can't do that, then they're probably not athletic enough or coordinated enough to play inside linebacker to begin with. Let's just say in 38 years, I've never had a kid that could do everything else to play linebacker but couldn't cross, dig and crossover. Okay, never happened. All righty. So that's the digging crossover. It works. It's effective. So now next, okay, right? Lucky Ringo to the backer. Backer's on the right. He says Ringo. So now the nose knows he's got to go to the call. So he slants a gap to the call because. Well, the backer is plug blitzing the 
opposite A gap. So these are the only two guys involved in it. Everybody else is playing their normal 3 4. So let me get this a little bit squared away here. Okay? So now, <clears throat> that near edge, just like or the far edge, excuse me, just like a near edge read, whether it's the centers in an A gap or the guards in the B gap, it can do one of two things. It comes to you, so I'm going to use the same color, sorry. Peel and penetrate, right? It can come away from you, and this isn't easy. I didn't say it was. Goes away from you. Bend. Okay, so see, everything's consistent. And we use pop-up bags. You give them a couple, three reps, all it takes. Boom, 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 mix it up on them. They get it. Just keeps it fresh. So what is that one scenario to get you the auto read, right? Opposite guide, pull two. See, as you're digging and crossing over, your eyes are on this edge. you got to pick up the vision of that guard. You will never see this guard. We don't expect you to. So the one scenario, as it says, that opposite guard pulls to you will get you into readout. It's up to him to make a trap or a pull call, so he will. Okay? And that trap or pull call helps that guy, right? Whether or not he's getting trapped or whether it's the skip pull, so he's uh, pulling up to try and block play side linebacker. But this is right pull two read out of it so it's basically when you dig and cross over you'll see it one more step and redirect so it's one more step and redirect that's that one more step okay one more step one two redirect so they'll be planting off what was originally the up foot. And that's it, baby. There you go. That's how we execute the readout. One, two, readout. You see it, but you'll also hear it. We want them to see it. So when we practice this, there is no linebacker here, so there's no call. So they have to see it. You follow me? And again, it's Simple drill. Each player gets a couple, three reps. Boom, on to the next thing. These are not time-consuming things to rep in practice. All right? So those are the basics of our, what we call, single A-gap opposite plug. Single A-gap opposite plug. Okay? And the X signifies opposite plug. A-gap opposite plug. A gap, right? A gap opposite. So now we come over here to max, okay? Mike, A gap opposite, right? So now the mic is on the left. So he's making a lucky call. Nose, nose, he's got to go to the call. On the snap, dig and cross over, boom, boom. There it is. Okay, same exact scenarios, this far ridge. If it's to them, so obviously this guard's not going to be pulling away, pulling towards them. Right? Peel and penetrate. It's moving away. We understand it's tough, but you're just going to bend. You're going to occupy the A-gap, so that's not a running lane. And then here's the scenario. Right? Dig, cross over, one more step, boom. So one, two steps, right? You dig, the cross is the one. You see the guards coming to you. One more step, abort. One more step, abort. Read out. And that's how we execute our single A-gap opposite. Single A-gap opposite plug. Single A-gap opposite plug. It's consistent with our rules for A-gap plugs, okay? 
So as I mentioned at the beginning to my subscribers, I thank you. And to those who haven't yet, I really, really hope you do. But to everybody, I hope if you have any questions that you'll reach out to me at CoachMJSullivan at gmail.com, including when will we use this, how effective is it, how does it work against this particular blocking scheme or this play, etc. Okay? So, <clears throat> again, please reach out to me. I hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching.